What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Thursday, October 13th, 2022. It's about 3.30 p.m. California time. The latest quake shows a 6.3 earthquake coming in right now to the Papua New Guinea area. Let's go ahead and check out this activity again. That's coming off of the EMSC model. Um, looks like, let me check USGS here real quick. Stand by for a second. That is not coming in yet. Uh, again, just coming into the Earthquake 3D globe from the EMSC model. And they're kind of a little bit of, a little slow on their own page. 6.3, there it is in the purple circle. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what we got for a little bit of info. Looks like it got downgraded to a 6.2. We'll uh, wait and see what the USGS wants to issue as far as their preliminary data system goes. Either way, looks like it's going to remain around a 6.0 earthquake here. One of the larger ones here we've seen in a few days. Looks like about uh, 100 kilometers deep. Looks like a 1.1 up there uh, in the Croatia area as well. Let me pull this up, see if USGS has... Of course they're slow, right? USGS is always slow. Um, but that's the way it is with them. We'll wait on them here uh, as they get uh, the info in. Let's go ahead and cover the West Coast here real quick. Seen some activity kicking off of the Northern California coastline. Now we did see a 4.4 .4 earthquake coming in earlier this morning time frame. You notice well off into the Pacific Ocean there. This was about five hours ago, somewhere around there, about five hours. Uh, had a 4.4, pretty shallow earthquake at about 10 kilometers, followed up by a 2.8 within the same area. Um, and it's uh, it's been pretty active up here, believe it or not, in the trimmer department. And the trimmer, Cascadia trimmer, has been pretty heightened. We're going to look at this here in just a second. But uh, things are uh, been definitely been moving here underneath this area down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia for about two weeks now. Uh, so it only makes sense to see a little bit of buildup and earthquake, uh, earthquake activity ramping up in this region. Although I really haven't seen too much specifically in this area of the center portion of the Cascadia where all the tremor has taken place. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely keep watching that, keeping our eye on it. Uh, again, nothing coming in from the USGS. We'll check here periodically. Uh, some movement just south of Eureka as well. Looks like a 1.8 and a uh, 1.7. Some of this earthquake activity overnight. Down there at about 24, 25 kilometers deep into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, up into the northern uh, Pacific Northwest. Not a whole lot going on. Just a couple small microquakes. Uh, so we're going to stick here to California for now. Looks like the latest quake, at least here on the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault near Pinnacles, California. 2.2 coming in. That's the creeping section, the creeping segment. Um, very known for having quite a few twos and threes and occasional fours and fives on this section. But for now, a couple small microquakes. Uh, pretty spotty as we head down towards the Garlock Fault structure. We are still seeing a little bit of swarming here up against the Wheeler Ridge. And uh, I'm going to pull up the last 30 days of activity here for this specific area. And it uh, looks, kind of looks like that swarm is migrating a little bit. Last week, or a few days ago at least anyway, we had a little swarm kicking up down here. Looks like that's migrating here to the north. So um, let's see what we got for seven days. Yeah, most of the newer activity can find here north of the Wheeler Ridge. There's still a fault system that kind of runs through here. It's a thrust fault up against this mountain range. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, kind of uh, swings over here a little bit to a new section called the White Wolf Fault Zone. Uh, but this whole area right here is a little on the sketchy side. Uh, and there's a lot of potential for some uh, earthquake activity. It's been quite a while since they've seen any major earthquake activity, full ruptures on any of these little fault systems. So... Uh, again, that's north of the Garlock Fault Zone, north of the Tehachapi area. Looks like uh, right around the, uh, let's see what's made, Willow Ridge. Little community down there. Go back to the all magnitude or the uh, one day here. Waiting on the USGS. Waiting on them. 
Uh, this thing refreshes about every uh, 30 seconds or a minute or so. Uh, some activity down in the southern portion of the state as well. State of California, that is, a 1.4. Looks like off of the Elsinore Fault System. The San Andreas Fault, for now, pretty quiet. No major swarms kicking off there in that region. Uh, a little spotty activity throughout Nevada and Utah up against the mountain ranges here. Yellowstone National Park kind of bumping earlier this afternoon time frame with uh, some twos uh, and very close three-pointers. Uh, so, you know, 2.9 looks to be the largest in that sequence of swarms right here. That's um, pretty uh, somewhat active, right? This has been ongoing here for, oh man, about five, six weeks now. Let's check out the Yellowstone overview here real quick and then we'll check on that other earthquake here in a second. Now the earthquakes in question are pretty prominent here across the board. You can see them all across the area. Now there's a couple different segments here, sections of the park that we're watching. This area up here around Holmes Hill is the epicenter of the earthquake swarm uh, and the swarming that we've seen today and also over the past five, six weeks. This has been one section. You can see this 2.9, a little bit more darker, a little bit more prominent. And uh, that just kind of, you know, very, uh, I'm trying to think of the word here. You can see it pretty well, right? Pretty prominent on there. Some of these other earthquakes, a little bit less as far as the thickness of the, uh, the graph itself goes, as far as the thickness of the signature. And some other very small microquakes, but there's definitely a lot more than the 20 or so that they have listed here on this map. They got about 20 earthquakes. Uh, and I can guarantee you, I can probably count more than 20 on this area, uh, at least over the past 24 hours. And then there's another earthquake over here. Uh, and you can kind of see the signature. I'm, this one right here, this obviously looks like a distant earthquake away from this area. It's not as well defined, not as well spiky, so to speak. And this earthquake is somewhere over here along the eastern section of the park. It's not being picked up here um, in the USGS model, but it is being more prominent and more uh, visual over here along the eastern section of the park over towards the, um, kind of looks like, I can't remember the name of the station over here, Parker Peak, appears to be uh, somewhere over here is where it's taking place at but uncertain uh, because it doesn't look super close here to this region. It looks more active as far as that oddball earthquake activity down here around this section of the park. But again, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where that's taking place at. But either way, activity kind of ramping up here around the Yellowstone National Park area. Nothing coming in from the USGS yet. Uh, some movement into the Oklahoma area where we've been watching a swarm. I'm still keeping the earthquake uh, watch up for now. We are still seeing earthquake activity here around the Kingfisher area. And uh, this has been an ongoing deal for a couple days now. 150 earthquakes uh, over the last week. And if you want to bring in the previous swarm here, uh, we're well over the 200 number now. 211 earthquakes here in Oklahoma confined to one area that's a lot for oklahoma i'm not joking it's a it's kind of a big deal there's other swarms other locations and we've seen it before 20 30 within a day but not 200 i mean that's something's uh getting ready there to maybe produce a larger earthquake so that's kind of why i'm leaving that earthquake watch up here for the oklahoma area the activity is still continuing uh, did have some movement up around the oklahoma um, kansas border Looks like a 2.7 coming in there, right smack dab. Eh, looks like the Oklahoma side. Want to see what we got out here as well. Um, looks like a little creek or crick, however you want to pronounce that. Not for certain though, if there's any type of uh, old pumping operations out here, uncertain. But uh, I wouldn't doubt it. We do have the uh, Numa oil field, a couple other oil fields nearby. So some of those could be some older wells out there covered up by the vegetation. Um, further east, one earthquake here around the New Madrid zone. 1.7 near Marston, Missouri. Eastern portion of the country looks pretty quiet for now. Puerto Rico is still swarming up here. 
kind of in an odd area in between the Dominican Republic and also the Puerto Rico area around the Mona Passage. Seen uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity on the Marotos Trough and also up here around the Puerto Rico Trench, kind of squeezing that area. Uh, a couple different uh, trenches there and subduction zones, putting Puerto Rico on the squeeze. South America, not a whole lot going on now, currently. Uh, the big island of Hawaii, most of the activity around the Pahala area, but we're still watching a swarm of activity up here at Mauna Loa. No major changes, no major adjustment to the uh, daily update. Uh, it's the same as it has been for the past few days, but we are still keeping an eye on that for certain. Uh, up here around the Kuril Kamachaka Trench, getting in on a 5.0. Uh, this one coming in looks like that was late afternoon time frame yesterday. Since then, not a whole lot popping up here on the map. Uh, we have been waiting for some activity out here around the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea area, New Zealand as well, uh, considering the deeper movement. There we go, 6.4 earthquake just popped up there on the map. A little bit of an upgrade, surprisingly, from the USGS. 6.4 at 71 kilometers deep. That's what we got over here the last seven days or so. Not a whole lot. A uh, little activity outside the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area, but this deeper movement quakes here, these deeper earthquakes do put a lot of pressure northwest due to the general plate movement, right? You got the Pacific plate as a whole moving towards the northwest and uh, a couple different segments here squeezing together, creating uh, a lot of stress in that area. Uh, but I'm still kind of watching this New Zealand area. Yes, they did see a 5.1 coming in earlier this morning time frame and that earthquake uh, 166 kilometers deep uh, if you don't know what's down here that is the Hikarangi subduction zone uh, that's another kind of sketchy area in terms of uncertainty in terms of uh, well producing a mega quake there is that possibility there but not a whole lot of historical data on it uh, and that would not be good news to have a mega quake out here off the coast of New Zealand but either way uh, a 5.1 here this morning time frame. Again, there's that 6.4. We'll see if that holds steady as a 6.4. Uh, a little bit of movement outside of the Philippines as well and a Taiwan region. Further west, some spotty activity throughout the uh, looks like the Mediterranean region around Turkey uh, and also an earthquake here around Italy with a 4.3 off. Yeah, it looks like it's inland. Yeah, wait a minute. We gotta really zoom in. Okay little tricky there just off the coast here at uh, 33.7 kilometers for that 4.3 so things kind of kicking up here for sure around the globe things getting very active right now and uh, I think it's we're gonna start being in that uh, very active stage so we got to be prepared the tremor activity from last night um, was pretty uh, active 464 epicenters of tremor and this has been an ongoing deal here for a couple weeks now uh, quite a few weeks actually and mostly confined to this segment of the Cascadia so um, it's only only makes sense to, here to finally see a little bit of buildup and stress out here offshore but also at the same time uh, that means it's kind of putting the Cascadia here at risk and building up uh, further strain along this already locked area off the coast of Oregon so just a heads up there uh, solar weather activity not a whole lot happening right now um as far as solar flare potential goes looks like most of the activity has kind of calmed down a little bit only in the sea flare category since the m 1.4 or 1.5 uh overnight or yesterday i should say yesterday utc time uh, no major coronal holes facing us all the sunspots are disappearing off the northwestern side of the sun and we're left with a whole lot of uh Let's bring up the latest map here. A whole lot of nothingness out here. Uh, some minor sunspot development here, but these things don't look like they're ga gaining any strength. Uh, but we'll watch them in the coming days and see if they develop in anything that's worth mentioning. But for now, uh, we're going to be green. Green across the board. No major uh, space weather events expected for now. Uh, let's see what else we have here. I think that's about it, folks. Going to jump off here. We'll be back a little bit later on tonight with the update. Uh, just wanted to get this one in. Uh, I know it's a little late in the afternoon. Kind of busy earlier this morning time frame. But uh, we'll be back a little bit later tonight. 6.4. 
Papua New Guinea area. Things kind of rocking and rolling right now in that area. Stay safe, folks. We'll catch you later.